Good morning. So today what we're going to do is um, we're going to cover 5.1, which is graphing inequalities. So whenever you're graphing an, in, an inequality, um, it really is the exact same thing as just graphing a line. We're going to use the intercept method or the cover-up method. So if you want to go back and um, review that video, you can do that. Um, and then there's w um, one extra step. So when we're dealing with inequalities, excuse me, <coughs> when we're dealing with inequalities, you're dealing with a series of numbers or a whole set of numbers or an interval um, of numbers. So it's not just one point or one specific line. So there's three, um, three parts to a graph of an inequality. There's the part above the line, there's the part below the line, and then there's the line, the actual line. So when we're doing an inequality, if I have the inequality um, x plus y is greater than or equal to um, 3, what we're going to do is we're going to graph it using the cover-up method. So we're going to pretend like this is just an equal sign. Okay, The inequality does not come into play until later. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our cover-up method. So remember, the cover-up method is how we find the x and the y-intercept. When we cover up the x value, that's when x is 0. So we're going to end up with a y value. So in this case, y is going to be 3. So my first intercept is the y-intercept, <coughs> the point 0, 3. So I come over here on my y-axis, and I put a point at y equals 3. Okay. The next one is when I cover up the y value, that's when y is 0. So in this case, the x is going to be 3. So my x-intercept is also 3. So I come over here and I put a point on my x value or my x-axis at 3. Now, the difference with an equal sign and inequality is the inequality tells you whether the line is included or not. So when you have a greater than or equal to, so greater than or equal to, or the sign less than or equal to, what that indicates is you have a solid line. So just like when we are graphing points, if you have a solid point, that means the point is included. If you have a solid line, that means the line is also included. So when I say included, what I mean is those are values that will satisfy this equation or this inequality. Okay, so it's a solution set. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create the line. We know it's solid because it's a greater than or equal to. So I'm just going to connect my two points with a solid line. Okay. If this was just less than or just greater than, so if it was a less than or greater than sign, then it would be a dotted line. So in this case, if this, if this was just greater than, then what I would do is I would draw the line and I would make it a dotted line or a, um, a line that's broken. So what that indicates is that the points on that line are not included. So we're going to keep this as greater than and equal to, so it's going to be a solid, a solid line. So here's the difference between just graphing a line and graphing an inequality. Whenever you graph an inequality, you have to identify which side of the line is the solution, right? So what points, is it the points above the line that are our solutions, or is it the points below the line? Well, the way that you identify that is what's called a test point. And you're going to use the easiest test point there is. So the test point is going to be the point zero, 0, okay? So on a graph, the point zero, 0 is sitting right here. So what we're asking is, is this test point a part of the solution set? Will it make this um, a true statement? So what you do is you take your 0, 0, x is 0, y is 0. You plug it into your inequality, x is 0, y is 0. So you end up with 0 is greater than or equal to 3. Then you have to ask yourself, is this a true statement? Well, obviously, 0 is not greater than 3 or equal to 3. So this is a false statement. So what that means is this point right here is not part of the solution, which means that everything above the line is the solution. 
So this is where your shading comes in. So on my math lab, you're going to shade it by picking up the tool that looks like a, a paint can with paint spilling out. You're just going to pick up that tool. You're going to place it in the right region above or below. And then you're going to click that button and it will shade in that side. Okay, so what it's saying is all of these points up here will make this a true statement. So let's try one. So let's just pick a point. So let's pick a point at um, 3, 4. So this point right here is the solution or is the address of 3, 4. Well, let's try it. If I plug 3 in here, 4 in here, is that, that's the question, is that greater than or equal to 3? Well, 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 is greater than, um, than 3, so that is the correct solution. Right, so if you aren't sure that you're shading it right, just pick a point in the region and, see, and plug it into your inequality and see if it works. Okay, let's try one more. All right, so we have, let's try um, 2x minus uh, 5y is less than um, 10. Okay, so there's our inequality. We have a less than sign, so you always want to identify you're going to end up with a dotted line or a broken line, which means the actual points on that line are not included in your, in your answer. We're going to find, always find your x-intercept and y-intercept first. So the y-intercept, we're going to use the cover-up method. The y-intercept is when x is 0, so I cover up my 2x and I end up with negative 5y equals 10. I divide both sides by negative 5. So I have negative 5y equals 10. So notice I'm not even worried about that inequality. All I'm doing is I'm solving it as if it was an equation. So I'm just going to divide both sides by negative 5, and I get y equals negative 2. So my y-intercept, when x is 0, y is negative 2. My x-intercept, Again, using the cover-up method. X-intercept, I cover up the y, because that's when y is 0. And I get 2x equals 10. Divide both sides by 2, and x equals 5. So my x-intercept is 5, 0. So covering up the y, that's what makes it 0. Covering up the x, that's what makes it 0. Okay, So make sure you get them in the right spot. So now we're going to graph it. So when you graph, <clears throat> I have a point, a y-intercept at 0, negative 2. So here's 0, negative 2. I have a point at 5, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my point at 5, 0. I'm going to have a dotted line. So I can, with the whiteboard, I can draw it and then make my, but you can just do um, dashes if you want. Okay, so now we have to use our test point. So the test point is, again, 0, 0. When I plug 0 in here, that goes to 0. When I plug 0 in here, that goes to 0. That's why we use 0, 0. It makes it very easy. So this all dumps to 0. 0 is less than 10. That's a true statement. So what that indicates is this point right here, this is test point of 0, 0, is part of the solution. So I'm going to shade in everything that includes that 0, 0. So my line, my dashed line or dotted line is here. And what this is saying is all the solutions above the line indicate that this will be, um, this will be a true statement. So let's try one. So we already tried 0, 0, so we really do know that's right. But if you don't trust yourself, Let's try a point, let's try a point one, one. So let's plug it in. Two times one is two, minus five times one is five. Two minus five is negative three. Negative three is uh, less than 10. So we know that that is the solution set. Okay, so this, is, this region up here is called a feasible region. What that means is any point within this upper region will s satisfy or will be a solution to this inequality. And that's how you graph uh, inequalities.